So ground cover is absolutely essential. Soil was not meant to be bare. Soil uh, has to have something growing on it and growing in it, and that's what keeps the soil alive. So whether you're uh, in a grazing operation, a cropping operation, perennial horticulture, keeping soil covered at all times is critically important. When soil is bared, biological function really declines, water infiltration declines, we lose soil carbon from these areas, and their contribution to the functioning soil ecosystem is a lot less. When soils are bared, they're exposed to a number of uh, potential impacts. So even raindrops, the impact of a raindrop on the surface of the soil is really quite explosive. It creates compaction and it creates surface sealing. And of course, when ground is bare, it's really vulnerable to erosion by the rain, by the water, or erosion by wind. Bare soil is also extremely vulnerable to baking by the sun. Although soil is not a great conductor of heat, the top centimeter or two of the soil is exposed to temperatures that are high enough to kill the organisms that are living there in that very surface of the soil, which is the most fertile part of the soil, where there should be the highest population of soil organisms. We're killing that soil by bearing it and by exposing it to the elements. Ground cover is particularly important on steep country such as this. We've talked about the importance of deep rooting to help stabilize this soil. And obviously if we have plants that are only this big, their roots are only going to be that big. So the taller the plant, the bigger its root system is going to be, helping to bind soil together on this very steep country. Now in a regenerative ag grazing situation, we generally want to have minimum residuals of around 1500 kilos of dry matter per hectare. But on landscapes like this, 1500 kilos is probably a bit short and is going to compromise that root mass that's, that we need to hold some of these really steep slopes together. Today we're talking about regenerative agriculture as it applies in a perennial horticulture environment. The focus of course is entirely on grapes and traditionally we have a, a, a sprayed out under vine uh, row and what's managed between the vines is really something that just needs to be kept short, kept neat, because it's not normally part of the production equation. This is an organic vineyard, uh, but whether it's organic or not, the kind of regenerative agricultural practices that we want to see here is we want to see firstly soil covered. So management of the inter-row with mixed cover crops is all about trying to bring this soil into the production equation. So of course uh, uh, the grape roots are going to try and grow out wide as well as down to secure moisture content. So when they're able to grow out into the inter-row here, we want them to grow out into a well-structured soil where there is good nutrient cycling and a diversity of soil biological activity. One of the things that we particularly want to see under grapevines is high fungal populations. High fungal populations in perennial horticulture assist with nutrient capture, nutrient exchange, water capture, soil structure, all of those good things that we're trying to bring about in, in, uh, in improving our soils. With a, an annual crop like this, oats and vetch, this is going to grow up and, and provide us with some substantial biomass in the inter-row. We don't want that particularly competing with the vines for nutrients or for water, so we need to actively manage this inter-row. And an excellent way of managing this is using a crimper roller. And the crimper roller is used at strategic times in the growth stages of the inter-row to roll down the crop, greatly suppress its vigor, kill some of the plants, and provide us with a heavy mulch bed between the rows. Managing our inter-rows like this, we're growing mulch in situ, which is not only a really the, the cheapest way of getting mulch into our systems, but of course we're laying down a large quantity, potentially uh, three to five tons of dry matter uh, as a mulch which is going to break down and and so much of that is going to contribute to soil carbon and uh, improvement in structure under these systems. Now if you don't have access to a crimper roller the obvious solution is to slash the inter-row and there's a couple of different models available some slashers throw to the side and throw the cut material under the vine and that can assist with undervine management. And this is a really lovely example of the depth and quantity of mulch that's supplied by a side throw uh, mower. 
And of course, every time we're slashing the mulch, we're getting a corresponding dieback in root volume and a pulse of carbon goes into the soil. So the more we, we, we cut, we mulch, we pulse, we cut, we mulch, we pulse, we're constantly feeding the soil and maintaining a live and diverse soil ecosystem. Now compost has been applied to this undervine about six months ago and you can see that it's still present on the surface but a lot of it has broken down and is, uh, and is uh, uh, feeding the soil. And when we look underneath the soil we can see that we've got a rich very dark soil with lovely peak worm channels here and good worm activity in the soil. Don't forget that uh, worms, as the charismatic megafauna of the underground world, are only there because of the presence of the food that they need to live on. If those lower layers of the soil food web aren't present, we're not going to see good worm populations either. And of course the principal benefit of compost in this system not only is it feeding the soil but it's introducing so much additional organic matter and returning the organic matter that was produced by these vines in the form of the grape mark that was composted and returning that material back to the soil to help build soil carbon here.